Is bioenergy an environmentally friendly technology? Sustainable forestry advocates say that a sustainably harvest forest can absorb more carbon dioxide than it releases. On the other hand, we've probably all seen articles about bioenergy projects that have slightly dodgy environmental credentials. And then further complicating things is the fact that two thirds of the world's current bioenergy use is from cooking and heating in developing countries, using some wood fuels, but also including crop residues and dung. Uses that clearly have little to do with the large wood pellet or bioethanol industries that many people think of when they think of bioenergy. In this video, I'm gonna be digging into all those issues and I'm gonna share with you my criteria that I use to decide whether a specific bioenergy project is actually good for the environment or whether it's better filed under greenwashing. Welcome to Engineering with Rosie. I got approached recently to work on a bioenergy technology product and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to since I've seen so much coverage about the environmental impact of large-scale projects like wood pellet power plants and the bioethanol industry. Bioenergy in its simplest definition is using plant matter to provide energy, either by burning it for heat to power a generator, by converting sugars or fats to bioethanol or biodiesel, or digestion or fermentation to produce biogas. It's been around since early humans learned how to control fire for cooking over a million years ago. At the most superficial level of analysis, bioenergy is carbon neutral, as every molecule of CO2 released when the fuel is burned came out of the atmosphere when the plant was growing. So the net effect is zero. But you only need to look slightly deeper and you'll find that bioenergy isn't always carbon neutral. If you add processing, transportation and land use changes, then you'll likely add emissions and cutting down a tree to burn it releases all its carbon now, rather than at the end of the tree's natural life, which might have been centuries away. That's significant because we're in a critical period now as we race to get to carbon neutrality before we blow our carbon budget to keep warming close to 1.5 degrees. And greenhouse gas emissions aren't the only harm that bioenergy can cause. Deforestation, loss of biodiversity, and loss of land currently used for food crops are all potential negatives. For me personally, my biggest scepticism of bioenergy comes from the knowledge that you can shred native forests full of orangutans or koalas, burn it for energy and put it in the renewables part of your energy accounting. This kind of accounting trick is especially dodgy when it happens across borders. The country where the tree is cut down needs to add CO2 from land use change in their carbon accounting, but the country that's using the bioenergy doesn't record any emissions, even though burning biomass in a coal power plant actually increases the CO2 release from the power plant. So it allows the country doing the burning to feel smug about their sharp emissions reductions without having to deal with the consequences of land use change. But not all bioenergy is made from koala or orangutan habitat. Much of today's biomass is crop residues and waste from industries such as sugarcane, sawmills and paper mills. So it allows a good way to get usable energy from what would otherwise have been wasted. If you're burning agricultural waste, for example, you might as well generate electricity as you burn it since its carbon is going to be emitted either way. And then there are some really appealing aspects to bioenergy, like the ability to store it and to make liquid fuels from non-fossil sources. So you can directly substitute for anything from a coal power plant on a large scale to a diesel generator on a small scale. In industries like aviation or shipping, bioenergy may provide a faster and cheaper emissions reduction than the alternatives. Finally, if we can get carbon capture and storage technology working properly, and if that's combined with carbon neutral bioenergy, then there's the opportunity for negative emissions through BECS, bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. So if we were to rule out any kind of bioenergy in the future, then we'd limit our opportunity to find the fastest and lowest cost pathway to net zero. All right, so that was a lot of different sources of bioenergy and a lot of different uses. So let's try to categorize them to see if we can start to separate the good from the bad. And I'll also add a third category of ugly, where some environmental harm is done in order to solve an otherwise tricky decarbonization problem. Good bioenergy projects use waste from an existing industry like residues of wheat straw, olive pips, macadamia shells. And at this point you may be thinking, yeah, all bioenergy projects say that they're using existing waste, but it depends what you call waste, doesn't it? And that's a good point. 
Thanks. It's nice to say that you only use waste from other industries, but there's a difference between a small farmer collecting macadamia shells to use for fuel locally and, say, paying a large forestry company on the other side of the world for their waste. If you get paid by the tonne for your waste, then there's an incentive to make more of it. And when these supply chains span across the globe, it's not so easy to keep an eye on it and to be sure that your bioenergy project isn't giving a financial incentive to chop down native forests and expand problematic industries. And then there's one other thing about waste wood in forests that's often raised by sustainable forestry advocates that really wobbles my wallaby. <laughs> Dead wood in forests might seem like a waste to some people, but not to the forest ecosystem. Just look around in this little bit of bush in the middle of Canberra. There is dead wood everywhere. Now it's spring, birds and animals are fighting over the hollows to nest in. Insects also live in dead wood. It decomposes and improves the soil so new trees can grow. It is not waste that is just waiting for some wood pellet company to come along and hoover it up. So I think that we need to be careful about assuming that bioenergy from waste is automatically good. Though, of course, it can be. Many agricultural processes involve burning waste because they haven't got anything else to do with it. And sawmills and paper mills have offcuts that should be used for something productive, just without providing an incentive to expand, which is a tricky balance. So the first criterion of a good bioenergy project is that the fuel comes from a legitimate waste stream. And importantly, it needs to be the best use of that waste. Is there something better that you could be doing with this fuel or the land that it grew on? Is the land needed to grow crops to feed people? Could you use the stubble for soil improvement or to increase soil carbon? Then the second criterion is how much energy is used to process and transport the bioenergy. Fuel that's gathered locally and used with minimal processing is probably fine, whereas heavily processed and transported biofuels may even consume more energy than they provide. Bad bioenergy projects use more than just local and unprocessed waste. It might involve clearing native forests or productive cropland to change to growing bioenergy crops. Or it can give an incentive to be more wasteful or to expand to meet demand for more waste. Palm kernel shells are a waste product of the palm oil industry and are widely traded biomass in Southeast Asia. It's a legitimate waste stream and yet we've all seen pictures of orangutans suffering after their habitat was cleared to expand the palm oil industry. Using palm kernel shells as biomass doesn't exactly invoke warm and fuzzy feelings, even if the palm kernel shells are a source of waste that would otherwise be burned. I'm not particularly keen to see palm plantations become more profitable. There is already so much deforestation from the expanding palm oil industry, and actually any projects or policies that increase global demand for biodiesel are likely to result in more land cleared to make way for new palm plantations. In my opinion, there isn't a defensible case to clear native forests to turn it into a source of biomass, even if it's through sustainably managed forests. Incidentally, this is one of the assumptions for the IEA's net zero roadmap. That roadmap increases the amount of bioenergy from 65 exajoules in 2020 to around 12050, with no increase in cropland used and no bioenergy crops developed on um, forested land. Traditional biomass and conventional bioenergy crops like corn for ethanol actually reduce in that scenario, and the bulk of the increase comes from organic waste streams. So of course I'd want to be sure what those waste streams were exactly, but I think this roadmap gives some good scenarios about the range of applications and scale that's appropriate for bioenergy in a net zero future. Sometimes it might make sense to use bioenergy even if the fuel is not an otherwise unusable local waste source. I call such applications ugly uses of bioenergy, and whether you're prepared to accept an ugly solution depends on what you're doing with the bioenergy and how easily you could have done it with a different fuel. Using agricultural waste to improve soil might give better environmental outcomes in some circumstances, but it won't give good outcomes for the people who relied on that fuel to cook and heat their homes. If they can afford it, they're likely to swap to diesel generators, and if they can't, then they'll be pushed further into poverty. One major use of bioenergy is ethanol made from corn in the US, blended with gasoline to make it a little cleaner. To me, this doesn't count as an appropriate ugly use of bioenergy into the future, because electrification of transport is a relatively easy decarbonisation win. But changing aviation to battery electric or hydrogen is much harder, and it will take decades longer than it would to use drop-in biofuels. Once we've moved all the short haul aviation to trains or electric planes, perhaps the remainder is best solved with biofuels. Similarly, other hard to decarbonize sectors like shipping and seasonal storage are potential ugly applications of bioenergy that may be the least environmentally harmful option out of the alternatives. 
And if we find ourselves blowing through our carbon budget before we get to net zero, then we'll need a lot of negative emissions. In that case, perhaps burning wood pellets in converted coal generators with carbon capture and storage might be the smart thing to do. I really hope that we don't get to the point of needing such ugly solutions as that, but if we really are staring down the barrel of two degrees plus warming, then that is going to be extremely bad for native forests and their biodiversity anyway. So am I pro or anti bioenergy? The answer is yes. Joking aside, bioenergy is so complicated. Unless you have heaps of information and a lot of time to sort through all that complexity, it's pretty hard to figure out which projects to support or oppose. So this is my personal rule for bioenergy. It's about using waste from local sustainable sources as your fuel source and only deviate from that in very limited applications where there aren't any good alternatives. Some people may argue that we should be using sustainably managed forests to provide wood pellets on a large scale as a low carbon replacement for coal power and heat. When that comes from waste from existing forestry uses, it can be a very low emission source of energy and you can store the energy, which is a big plus. But I think that this kind of very large scale biomass comes with a risk that we'll see native forests destroyed or land that was used to grow food crops be diverted to biomass. I just feel like those kinds of negative outcomes are quite likely and really hard to monitor. Dave from Just Have a Thing did a good video focusing on these issues. So I recommend you check that out if you want to dig deeper into that. As I was researching and writing this script, I actually felt quite uncomfortable. I am such a nature lover. And the reality is that any bioenergy project has the potential to harm nature if it's scaled up without considering the impacts. I'm working on a small scale biomass project at the moment that can replace diesel generators and it primarily uses locally gathered waste as fuel. To me that's clearly in the good category but I do need to consider what unintended effects may arise in the future. Could we see perverse outcomes when this technology becomes more widespread? Will people use it in a way that we didn't intend? These concepts are uncomfortable to think about for me when the whole point of me having chosen a career in renewable energy is to help the environment. But actually the issues with bioenergy aren't so different to the work that I do in the wind industry, uh, worrying about the amount of steel that's used and the environmental harm associated with that, or the amount of waste produced if the blades aren't recycled. Those of us developing clean energy technologies need to be aware of the potential negative effects of the technology we're developing for sure, but we shouldn't stop progress because the status quo does so much more harm. Thanks to the Engineering with Rosie Patreon team for their support and actually one of the team members is a bioenergy expert and he gave me great feedback on the script for this video so thanks particularly to him. If you want to join a group of people passionate about clean energy technologies, chat in our Patreon only Discord server and help steer the future direction of Engineering with Rosie then you can join at this link. I'll see you in the next video.